All right, here's just a quick visual walkthrough for those of you who want to know how to create a new Visual Studio project that works with MASM. To do that, you're going to go into your solution, go up to the top, and you're going to add a new project. You're going to make sure that this is just an empty project. This particular system has already had the Architecture 2001 prerequisites installed on it. That's why we see some other stuff, but you're looking for empty project. Then you're going to just call it, you know, MASM test or whatever. Create. Go down and add a new item. And we'll just call that source.c. And then this is the actual trick here. The, the key trick is that you have to, before you add the MASM file, you're gonna right click on your project. You're going to go to build dependencies, build customizations, and then you're gonna click the little MASM checkbox here. And so this will tell it, you know, work with MASM, compile things, compile assembly as MASM, and then it'll all work out well. So you can now again, right click on the project, go to add, and create a new item. We're gonna call this my.asm. And now we've got an ASM file which will be compiled with MASM syntax assembly and a source file. So I'm going to just you know cheat and put in the same stuff that I have in the scratch pad. So you can see here's some C code that has a external function that is going to call out to the assembly. I'm gonna put that in there. And then in the assembly, I just have something very placeholder, and it's basically just this exported function, the ASM scratch pad, and then move one into RAX and return, because RAX is our return value by convention in x86 assembly. So with that, now I can go ahead and set this as the startup project. And I can set a breakpoint in here, for instance, and start the debugger. It'll compile successfully. It'll start up in the debugger, it'll break, and we can you know, just go to the disassembly view. We can see it's exactly what we expect. It's move one to RAX followed by return. So that's the very simple way that you can create a project that supports inline assembly that can be called, well, sorry, not inline assembly, standalone assembly that can be called from within a C file.